just ask you to state your name. My name is uh, Dr. James A. Simon. And you are? I'm clinical professor of obstetrics and gynecology at the George Washington University School of Medicine in Washington, D.C. And I just heard Dr. Simon give a fantastic discussion on a really large group of patients about the risk of how you choose to take your estrogen, either by skin or by mouth. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your study. We analyzed a very large database of insured patients, uh, some of whom were using a transdermal form of estrogen therapy and others were using oral forms of estrogen therapy. There are over 13 million women in the database. So that's an enormously large study and way larger than most studies. And so you were looking at what were you trying to prove or show with this study? Well, we weren't trying to prove or show anything. We were investigating whether or not the two different forms of estrogen had different risks particularly risks that are known to be associate, associated with estrogens from the large women's health initiative study, that big women's hormone study of now more than 10 years ago. So in the women's health initiative study, there were increases in heart attacks and increases in deep vein thrombosis, blood clots in the legs, which were much higher than they were in the group of women who are taking a matching placebo. And we wanted to know in this study whether oral estrogens like those in the Women's Health Initiative had a higher, the same, or a lower risk of deep vein thrombosis and heart attacks compared to a transdermal approach to delivery, namely a transdermal estradiol patch. So basically comparing the patch to the pill of estrogen, 13 million women, enormous study. Tell us what you found. Well, we found that the women who were using patches had a lower risk of blood clots in the legs, deep vein thromboses, had a lower risk of pulmonary embolism, those blood clots in the legs uh, traveling up to the lungs, and a decreased risk of heart attacks and that occurred quite quickly after beginning treatment. The difference be between the two treatments be began to separate quite quickly after initiation of treatment. What time interval would you say quickly? So we studied the average patient in the study was about three years of observation, 36 months, and we saw an increase initially in heart attacks as early as the first three months of treatment. Then the two groups became more similar, suggesting that women at real risk for heart attacks got their heart attacks quickly. Uh -huh. And then the difference between oral and transdermal therapy again became s significant around three years later. So there's an increased risk early on in heart attacks with the oral group and then an increased slow marching increase compared to transdermal therapy uh, with oral treatment that increased enough that there were statistically significant differences by three years. So if women have a history of blood clots in their family or they have a blood clotting factor in their blood or anything that puts them at potential risk for a heart attack or blood clots, they might be best to make what kind of choice? Well, first of all, they have to make a decision with their practitioner as to whether they should be on estrogen at all. Mm -hmm. um, if we know that they have significant risk factors, one needs to balance the benefit they will get from whatever treatment, in this case hormone therapy, with the risks. But that said, if they decide that they need, really need, hormone therapy for hot flashes, for example, or night sweats, or feeling better, or cognitive function, or anything else, then they would be more judicious in choosing a transdermal form of estrogen because the risks, uh, at least from our study, were lower. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.